for all of us, life is a growth path and we'll all have our strengths and we'll all have our areas of limitation. And the Z's are really clear about, you know, don't judge your perceived area of limitation because while you're ragging on yourself for thinking you're not very good at X, Y, or Z, you don't realize that because you're not very good at X, Y, and Z, you're really good at A, B, and C. And that is balancing you and setting you up. So I think the tricky thing about multidimensionality is realizing we can't be everything all the time. And I think those of us who like multidimensionality, there comes a point when you have to allow your humanity, allow the speed of the earth and being a human to find your soul and then come to some agreement in that dance where you're like, okay, this is how I'm gonna show up and this is who I'm gonna be. Lee Harris, what a joy to have you on. And you're right down the road from me. I know. I love that. It's very rare that that happens. So it's fantastic to meet you. Uh, so good to meet you. You know, we were just chatting before I hit record and I was just like, man, the vibration is so beautiful and potent. And of course, always in divine alignment. I was telling you that I've been very teary, very weepy. I'm just going to go there right out of the gate about some relationships that are in disillusion right now, specifically a business partnership. And there's so much coming up around it, even though I know it's in soul alignment and I can't deny any longer when that truth gets revealed. Mm. And yet it requires such a deep, active participation in surrender. And then you were sharing about a channel that you just offered. And I was like, ooh, maybe we'll open with that because it's just for a quick sec, it seemed to me the hardest part of all that we're going through in this, what feels like a collective split, kind of the bulk felt like it was maybe two, three years ago, but I'm noticing the nuance and the texture of even more areas to get so clean. And what I feel like is an integrity with my divine assignment. Does that make sense to you? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. It's funny, isn't it? Because, you know, I think the lockdown period was a period of shock and cocooning and uh, for some people, great fear, for some people, revelation, for others, a little bit of all of it. And I feel like as we have been slowly coming out of that period of history, Mm-hmm. and figuring out where we're, where we are now and who we are now mm. i've noticed in not just in my personal life but in people around me over the, the last 12 months but especially the last 8 9 months it seems like there have been a lot of changes in relationships including transformations within existing relationships mm. so i think you know our linear mind goes changes in relationships can usually mean an ending or a beginning. But what I'm also seeing as well as that is incredible transformations and people changing the nature of the relationship, improving the communication of the relationship. But it's interesting you talk about your business partnership because I just had a similar thing happen not that long ago. And when it happened to me, I was so shocked. And so like, I didn't see this coming. Uh, We've always been so aligned. Um, But it was very, very clear after Mm -hmm. repetitive investigation and communication with this other person that we couldn't even come to an agreement about what was happening. So normally I think resolution happens when both people can put down their sword, keep Mm -hmm. their heart open, be curious about what the other person has experienced as well as be clear about what they experienced. But if you can't do that, If that isn't being offered or reciprocated, you end up being in a bit of a war of words, opinions, or version of events. And at that point, you're like, oh, wow, we're just, okay, we've, we've, you know, we've tried everything we can. And now we are just clearly being shown that we are in disalignment. And this is, this is painful and difficult, especially if previously it was with someone you can be open with and flow with and, so, so I, I know, I know recently in my personal life, I, I went through that mm-hmm. and it's hard when you go through it because what actually is happening, and this is what the Z's explained in the changing relationships channel, every person that comes into our life, we have a certain amount of connection points with, and the Z's say that when you have eight connection points with somebody or more, it's, it's a really good relationship. So a connection point might be. You both love hiking. Mm. 
So you go hiking together. Another connection point might be you both really value kindness and it's a value that you lead with. It's a value you enjoy being in and around. The third thing might be you're both on a spiritual quest. You might not be following the same teachings, but you're both spiritually questing. The fourth thing might be you're both parents. So there's a shared. So the more of these that stack up, um, the richer our relationships become. And what they were saying was, there will be people who will come into your lives and for periods of time, you will be completely overlapping on those connection points. But then usually before the two of you go into a new future, the disconnection happens. So in the time the disconnection happens, we as humans tend to get very focused on, oh my God, why is this happening? We're very focused on the now. And what Mm. the Z's were saying was, actually what you're creating is a new beginning. So it seems like an ending to you and at that moment in time and for as long as you need to grieve and get yourself back together afterwards, it will mostly feel like an ending. But they say that in the moment of the ending, there is also the birth of a new beginning, a new version of you that is no longer in alignment with that person, but perhaps is going to take the gifts of that relationship forward now in your own body, in your own mind and your own awareness, but also other people who can now come in because that one relationship, particularly if it was a close one and it had a certain place and amount of time in your life, it frees you for the new to come in. And for me, what was quite radical about this business partnership was there was the the grief of letting go. There was the grief of letting go of the work that we were working on. There was the grief of just shock and like not really seeing it coming. But what was so interesting was when I got to the final point where all the investigations to see how we could repair, how we could come back together were failing, 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 failing over, over and over again. It was really clear. I was like, oh, okay. Am I willing to let all of this go? Okay. And I did. And weirdly for me, while the friendship hasn't necessarily been replaced with somebody at this moment in time, another very aligned business partner came in for similar work within like days and it was someone i'd known and loved for years but i you know i had this other thing going so there was no room and so it's interesting how when we let go either very quickly or in months or weeks to come we're actually letting the new thing come in and at the end of this channeled message which was about an hour and 10 minutes long Mm. and it's really like a cosmic journey around letting go Mm. they basically Mm. conclude with every ending is a beginning Every Mm. ending is a new beginning and you don't have to make yourself see that. Don't bypass the grief. Don't bypass the loss. But understand that when you get through this phase, a new beginning is what's calling you. Oh, so powerful. You know, when you spoke about your personal experience with grief and how, you know, the paradox of that, knowing that you're in alignment, but yet also holding space for profound grief um, and that cosmic journey of letting go, it's, it runs so deep in me right now. And as you shared your story, and thank you so much for all of that, it reminds me of almost like this microcosm of what's happening interiorly, interiorly. <laughs> I don't know exactly the word. The thing I don't speak You're creating so words. It's good. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> the inner, the inner landscape, right? Yeah. As opposed to what is also happening on the macro landscape. Mm. There's so much death and rebirth, death and rebirth, and and I think those of us who are on this path of whatever you want to call it, you know, where we are now, this energy, this frequency, uh, the more that we honor the guidance the wisdom, the whispers of our soul, the more that we can just have a little bit more courage and bravery to take that next step. Um, And I want to give you context. So in May, your energy update that came from disease, and I I love the, the monthly updates, as I know hundreds of thousands of others do around the world, May really spoke to me. It was about the inner fire and revolutionary energy, if you recall. Mm. And May was a profound month where I was like, I'm expansive. And I was getting these unbelievable, exciting opportunities that were coming my way. And it was all unsolicited. And it was, I, I just was like, wow. But I also had to keep checking, is this in alignment or is this another external source of validation? Right. And so I kept piercing through, piercing through, it turns out much of it made it through. 
And then June's energy update came and it was like the boom while also embodying the truth of who you are, right? Owning yourself, your, your truth. And right away, I got COVID for the first time. Ah. And in COVID, which was the most beautiful cosmic initiation, I got, I mean, in the night sweats and the terrors. And the My shit. experience was completely similar. And I got it for really? the first time like three months ago. And I had the what? exact same cosmic. And I don't, I don't want to take away from the horrible bits because the first few nights of fevers were horrible. But I, I just wanted to say I, I had a similar cleansing, purifying, uh, come back to myself journey through that. Well, beautifully put. And you said it so much better than I was probably about to so similarly, um, though I could feel what you were just sharing. So even in it, three o'clock in the morning, changing the sheets, soaking wet, you know, shaking, teeth chattering, all of that. I just kept hearing wisdom from the divine and it was letting me know what I needed to do and all of the cosmic letting go with multiple people and including and especially this particular business partnership. And it was just like, really? Right. But I knew and I was so fully surrendered because my body had no fight. Mm. And then I couldn't deny that wisdom. And so what I learned from that was I'm always being guided. I'll call them a shamanic journey, whatever you want to you know, refer to it as. It, it was so profound. And it was in that space where I sent the email. And then, of course, later I was like, oh, am I sure? But I can't second guess that kind of potency that comes through. And that's that's really what I'm hoping to help people really tune into more and more and more is the inner listening. So I'd love to hear more about your experience and maybe what you can share with my listeners, our listeners, of how they can start to tune in more and more to their multidimensionality, because that is the theme of book two, but it's also the theme of who you be and already as evidenced by what we're sharing here in our first few minutes. Yeah. Mm. I love everything you said. And and I, it's so interesting, isn't it? Because I think the layers of awareness, healing and direction that we get to embody, the more we follow our, our inner journey, and I was somebody who, until the age of 16, with the exception of creativity, I didn't have a connection to a sense of a spiritual life. It started for me at 16, which is 31 years ago now. And that was when I started studying metaphysics, spirituality, but I wasn't as metaphysically inclined as I was um, personal development and um, that kind of side of the work. So it was interesting to me that I ended up as a channeler because that, that if, you, if you'd given me like 10 options of what I could have ended up being, that would have been like not even on the list that would have been like no thanks that seems very inconvenient i'd rather be, <laughs> i'd rather be like a normal facilitator of personal development work yes <laughs> so but it's interesting because you talked about the june energy update and, and that boom energy mm. what's interesting for me is the energy updates are something that i translate as an energy intuitive which is very much like i am now seeing things through a human lens, but tapping in above my head to um, kind of to kind of piece it together. But I get the themes from the Z's. Mm -hmm. Occasionally, one or two of the themes are something I will add because I'm noticing patterns for people. And when they said June boom energy, you know, I'm always curious which one of these themes will find me. Yeah. And I had the exact same thing. Like mm. within days, it was like, you know, boom. this boom thing happened for me. But what I've learned, and I, I guess this is how we grow, for all of us, life is a growth path and we'll all have our strengths and we'll all have our areas of limitation. And the Z's are really clear about, you know, don't judge your perceived area of limitation because while you're ragging on yourself for thinking you're not very good at X, Y, or Z, you don't realize that because you're not very good at X, Y, and Z, you're really good at A, B, and C. Uh -huh. And that is, that is balancing you and setting you up. So I think the tricky thing about multidimensionality is realizing we can't be everything all the time. And I think those of us who like multidimensionality, there comes a point when you have to allow your humanity, mm. allow the speed of the earth and being a human to find your soul mm. and then come to some agreement in that dance where you're like, okay, this is how I'm going to show up and this is who I'm going to be. And you said something that really 
piqued me when you said, I sent the email and I was like, will I regret this? And there's a song that I wrote in 2018 about a similar experience, a kind of friendship breakup that I also didn't see coming. Mm. And the line in the song is called Learning to Love. Mm. We put it out on our recent album. Um, there's a line in the song that has been a key teaching for me. And the line is, I have to trust the words I say, even if they push you away. No, even if you push me away. Yeah. So there's something, and that has been a journey for me, like owning my truth, owning what I need to say. And of course, like everybody, it's, it's had highs and lows. It's had times where you go, oh God, I shouldn't have said that in that way to that person. Or, you know, it's not always flawless, but I think the more you practice those things that are going to help you be yourself, you get a little more acclimatized to it. And when I wrote that song in 2018, there was still a frisson of energy in me that I'm like, I need to speak my truth. And they're either going to hear my truth or they're going to reject me because of my truth about this scenario. And what happened was they rejected me. So it's like, okay, but what just happened for me, you know, five years later, six years later, there was none of that. There was just absolute clarity. And, and I, I, mm. I gave it almost, a, almost about three weeks and multiple attempts. But what the multiple attempts kept showing me was, no, there is a doubling down on the same narrative. There is no room for mm. co-exploration. Mm. And so I got to a point that even though I was heartbroken at the beginning, it was like, oh, okay, I surrender. W what do I know? What I do know is this is not okay. I don't know what's coming. I don't know what's future, but I know that this is too disturbing for me to try and stay with this and move forward with this. Oh. So I share that because I think we all go through our growth areas. We're often peeling another layer off the onion and improving that growth area. And these are the mastery tests that we each mm. go through. For, for one person, my version of that has been learning to speak my truth and own myself in the world mm. um, as a recovering people pleaser and all of that stuff that many of us are afflicted by. But then I think for someone else, it might be that your learning is you're actually really allowed to be an introvert and not be around people mm. as much as you have made yourself be. And it's okay for you to keep, uh, you know, kind of pulling back and, and maybe it's a phase or maybe it's you arriving at your truth. But in order to fully embody that, you kind of have to go, okay, I'm not testing this. I'm going to live as an introvert for the next three months and see what that feels like. So I think we're always experimenting mm -hmm. and the experiments should get a little easier, a little clearer and a little more galvanized each time. Oh, so well said. Beautifully put. Thank you for that. You know, when you talked about doubling down on your narrative, your truth, and isn't that a subjective term these days, even truth has been weaponized, you know, with so much polarization out there. But for those of us who are curious and open and feeling led and called and brave enough to honor that guidance, um, there is a doubling down for sure. So while I had that thought, I was able to recognize that was an old identity, an old mm -hmm. pattern. And inside of it, the wisdom that came through the message without giving too much detail, because it's irrelevant, all of us have experienced this or are going through it at some level right now, was to look at how it felt and to look at what's bringing me, drawing me closer to my truth and what is actually not. Mm -hmm. And that relationship from the beginning of what is going on right now in the collective we are not seeing things in the same way. And that partnership, I did so much work and healing around alchemizing my own thoughts around what they see and how could they see that and coming back to we are all walking each other home in the words of my teacher Ramdas. Um, but then ultimately it was like, and it's not aligned anymore. Mm. And the part of the message that was really powerful, and I didn't know that I was going to share this, but maybe there's a reason it's coming through in my field is the heart of what it was really about. And I don't know if you'll be able to relate or expand on this for yourself in any way or anything that you've learned from the Z's was scarcity. Hmm. If I let this go, it represents 60, 70% of what I have known as my 
annual income for the past mm-hmm. four years. I'm also really proud of this particular company. And, um, and the message was, and isn't that not unlike some of the past lovers? Mm. Not that any man had ever taken care of me or bought me a house or, you know, took care of my, but provided a beautiful lifestyle. And it was old, it was old, it was old. And I just went through an initiation in late fall to winter, where I let go of perfect on paper, had all the bells and whistles of the past, the known past, right? What I was attracted to, but the consciousness, it wasn't going to be aligned for a long-term purpose-driven partnership. And so I easily let that go with compassion and grace. It was such a knowing. And so the message was, this is the same energy, trust. So it wasn't about her. It wasn't about, it was all about me stepping more fully into my truth. Does that make sense? A hundred percent. And what I, what I love about what you're sharing is, is what I hear and see in what you're sharing is the pattern that all, all of us go through. Mm. So what your life and your soul is asking you to do is to go, nope, you're going to generate more on your own in future. Doesn't mean you aren't going to collaborate. It might be that there was a misalignment in that collaborative relationship that was going to limit you in the future in some way that you couldn't currently see. So whatever the story was that was playing out between the two of you, and this was kind of where I got to in my thing, I thought, well, there's a story you have that I just don't identify with. Yeah. And I have a very different experience of this, but I have no interest in picking apart your story or mm. judging your story. Like, cause you truly believe this. So I can't do anything about that. Um, I don't believe what you're believing. And I I've tried to have a back and forth, but you have no, you're, you're clear about what you're holding onto, which tells me, mm. oh, you're making the right choice for both of us, but I'm going to be the one that's going to have to make the choice as well and say, okay, this, this to me is, is showing that we are out of alignment. And in my case, you know, at that point, I received a very graceful acceptance, uh, which was the first kind of grace I had experienced in the whole thing of, okay, I respect and I trust free will. And so the reason I share all of that on a personal level is just to back up what you are going through, which is, the fear for you in letting go of the partner is probably a bit more rehearsed. Yeah. So you've gone through more of those. Mm -hmm. And perhaps this is a bit like a bit more like one of the first loves when it comes to business partnership or in terms of the growth, success or expansion you received with that person. It's harder to let go Mm -hmm. because this is not this is more of a first love in the collaborative business partner space. So you're going through that same level of emotion we go through with those first loves when all of our attachment and projection and heal me, you know, we wrap all of that around one poor person and they wrap it around poor us, you know, and and we have to, (laughs) when we, when we explode from that relationship or let go of that relationship, there are often a lot of feelings because what we're, what we're really trying to do is get more sovereign in our own core. So Mm. we are less enmeshed with the wounds and the gifts of others. It's not to say that the wounds and the gifts of another don't attract us because they match our level of wounding and gift. Might not be the same wound, but they might have their wounded areas to the same level or frequency that you have yours. And you can each help each other with the different wound. And because there is a frequency match, it works until it doesn't. Yeah. Until one person's gifts grow in a different direction or one person's wounds activate in a way that you can no longer dance with because the frequency mismatches. So it's very interesting hearing, you know, so thank you for sharing that because I think it's a brilliant illustration of of where we where we why we come to these moments of detachment with certain people. And when we have those detachments, it's it's far from over. Now Mm. the work begins in us. It's like, okay, now I need to fill in the hole that this has left, or I need to reflect, or I need to recalibrate, or so it's so interesting. Mm, 
Yeah, totally. Man, when you said that she was my first love in that capacity, it was very true. And I was so proud of that. And so it's just beautiful because this is such a deep honoring um, that I really feel like can be an example of what's possible. It doesn't mean there's not profound grief and sadness. Um, it's been all consuming on a lot of levels. There has been some worry and fear, but there's been a deeper sense and knowing of trust. And that I feel like is the essence, it is the theme of this time. And it brings me to something that I've heard you share. And I'm, I'm going to just say right now, especially for my, my listeners that are very well aware how excited I am that you are finally here because I've referenced Aww. you many times on the show. <laughs> you and Paul Selig have been very, very instrumental Aww. for me in terms of the channels out there in the world. And um, both of you came to the work a little bit reluctantly. And uh, here you are, right? Not quite sure what's coming through or yeah. what you remember, but beginning to really take it on. And you can you can clearly see, I don't even know if we'll actually need to channel with disease today because your energy, your essence is so palpable, right? And that's because there's been a pouring in, pouring through as you, it's revealing itself, you know, in this beautiful frequency. But getting back to my point, I've, listen to probably every podcast, read all the books. Your music wow. is my portal to transformation. Aww. Oh, oh we're going to go That's there so in a moment. Okay, we're going to go great. there. <laughs> oh, I cannot wait to see you live whenever that happens mm. sometime, hopefully soon. I know that you're really doubling down on your music right now. So I want to share about that in a moment, but you had talked about it somewhere. Maybe it was on Next Level Soul with Alex Ferrari. Um, oh, he's lovely. Oh, that was my favorite interview you've ever done. Oh, uh, it's one of my favorites, actually. He really? holds such exquisite space. Yeah. Yeah. You guys yeah. had fun. It was yeah. like a bromance. Yeah. And that was the first time I had seen you be interviewed where you hadn't been asked to channel. And I was so taken by that. And I didn't plan on not or, or, or I didn't have a, a preference, but I knew that I would know when we connected. And uh, so anyway... I think it was there where you talked about the purpose of all of life in your interpretation is connection and healing. Mm. And I want to expand on that because we kind of started here. And, and part of that then also ties into book two, uh, awaken your multidimension soul with you and the Z's and, and, and um, uh, Diana Edwards, the psychotherapist, mm -hmm. who's a beautiful interviewer. Mm -hmm. And it's, I want to start with connection and then go to healing, if that's okay. Just kind of like Completely. two pillars. You were talking a lot about how people don't necessarily want to be seen and heard as much as they want to be felt, mm. but more importantly, they want to feel. Mm. And so this, I feel like is a little bit of texture of what we're talking about. When we know ourselves, therefore we know the divine. We're no longer denying that in ourselves or others therein lies more access to truth, to knowing, but I don't want to steal any thunder from what you know to be true and what maybe lights you up around that concept of our purpose and connection. Interesting. Well, you know, I think, and this is the truth for any of us, right? When we're asked questions, the answer is always somewhat personal. Mm -hmm. So for me, connection and healing, I would say, have been the gift and the path of my life. Mm -hmm. So whether it's my connection to creativity, disease, the people in my life that I love, that's what I really value. And I, I, and I also, you know, I would say as I've matured, I really enjoy being alone too. Um, I didn't used to. I think I overdid it with people for many years because I didn't understand I needed to recover. Mm. Um, and and I come from a fairly rambunctious tribal family. You know, it's like you know, it, it's like okay, everybody's here, and so so, which is <laughs> lovely. But I also, you know, like I'm sure some of my family members do too. You you know, you need to go off and just count, kind of figure out where you are and who yeah. you are. So I think connection has been like a driving force for me. Mm. And I think it's my mission. I think it's my role. I think it's my purpose. So for someone else, they might say, well, I'm here for the land. I'm here for nature or I'm here mm. for animals or I'm here for the cosmos or I'm here for science. Or we all have different leanings. I know I'm here for people. Mm. Like if people weren't on this planet, I wouldn't want to be here. And that's not because I don't think it might be really lovely because it would be lovely to see this planet quiet. But after a while, <laughs> I would lose my purpose. Mm. 
So as much as I, when I go to the beach, when people go, do you want to go to the beach? I'm like, "Mm, which beach? And they're like, oh, the one that everyone's going to. And I'm like, "Mm -mm." I like to find the beach where there's no one or three people, which I know goes against, you know, the norm around beaches. So that's why whenever. Not for me. Yeah, (laughs) right. (laughs) So me and my similarly aligned friends will all be (laughs) in a place where there's nobody. Because I, the problem for me, weirdly, is. It's why I don't like tourist events. Mm-hmm. Um, like when I was in Egypt, I was kind of annoyed that, you know, there was so much tourist energy around those pyramids and the things that I was seeing. And I was like, God, I just want to see this quiet. I, I need to feel it more than the people. So I'm not saying I love people on mass because like many sensitives, if they're on mass, I like them focused. I like <laughs> concerts. I like, you know, then I love it because there's a unity. But if it's like on chaos on mass, I don't enjoy it as much, but I know I'm here for people. I know that my personal path required healing. Like there's no way I would have got through my childhood stuff if I hadn't focused on healing from my late teens onwards. Um, So ironically, I've ended up being an ambassador in that field, one of many who loves kind of giving back to that field. I I feel so privileged and um amazed 20 years later that here i am doing this work that i could never have foreseen but i think it's it's part of my north star um and i think there was something else you said that i wanted to pick up on but i can't remember the other part of your question if the yeah it maybe maybe it's not relevant is exactly if it's meant to come through it will Um, But I want to touch on something that you actually just shared and you talked about, you know, as you were healing from parts of your childhood. I know you've spoken very openly and also on Next Level Soul, which I love that conversation. As I mentioned, Um, there were three key areas that really stood out to me. And I'm curious if this is what you mean. Uh, And it was coming out as a gay man. Mm. It was coming out as a channel Mm. and also your addiction to food and the suffering and the Mm. wound there. Um, so with that trifecta felt like a lot. I had so much compassion when you shared that part of yourself so vulnerably on his show. Is that what you're referring to as part of your childhood wounding Definitely. slash yeah. healing? Definitely. Mm-hmm. And, and it's funny, you know, I just did this channel, uh, changing mm-hmm. relationships, endings, beginnings, transformations, and in it, I think it was in the channel or was it the end of the soul magic course? Because I've done a lot of channeling this month. (laughs) I can't remember where, but they said that eight years old onwards is when we start to disconnect. Mm. And, you know, and of course, every child is different. Like if a child is raised in an abusive home from baby, they're going to shut down very quickly. But uh, children that aren't in abusive or very extremely challenging situations, They said it's usually by about eight that the harder shell starts to develop. And it's funny because that would be around the time that my addictive eating started. Um, And so it's funny when I hear you say that and you remind me that I talked about that on the show. It's so interesting because I'm like, wow, I don't really feel anything around that anymore. But for years, for years, that ate me alive like Um, It was really, really challenging. And I think like many people who um, are in the gay or LGBTQIA community, I have to remember all the all the new letters because, you know, we're always we're always changing things here on Earth. Mm -hmm. I think anyone who has gone through that kind of marginalization, particularly of my generation or even worse before Mm -hmm. you knew that who you were was not wanted and not represented Mm. and you also knew that some people really wouldn't want you or would reject you or would judge you so like many kids i grew up with that lack of belonging now i can talk to my friends of color about that and it's a whole other story for them i can speak to spiritually aware intuitive people and they have the same story just through a different lens so you know what i've come to realize is that wound of isolation Mm -hmm. or disconnection is something we all live with but like many people for me it was highly personalized i was living with it alone i was addictively eating to try and cope with my sensitivity and the z's said at the age of six I stopped hearing them. Now, I do not remember hearing them before, Mm -hmm. um, but I don't remember much before six, to be honest. But they said at the age of six, my parents moved us from Birmingham down south in England. 
So I really grew up more in the south of England. That's more the culture I identify with in a way. And they said at that period of your life, it would have been problematic for you if we'd stayed with you. And yet I've often thought, wow, but it was from the age of six onwards to 16 that everything kind of was, was really tough for me, particularly my teenage years. But I found my way out, thankfully, thanks to, like for everybody, the support of certain friends or certain mentors in my life or certain examples or certain teachings, certain books, you know, thank God for what we as humans can do to help each other and support each other. And I think often it's when you're in the darkest moment that you need those things. And I think of how music and singer songwriters Mm. carried me through my teens. Mm. Like that would be the place I would go to in the dark in myself. And it would help me feel what I needed to feel. It would open it out. It would give me a different way of hearing it, seeing it, perceiving it through the lyrics. It would give me hope. Mm. Sarah McLachlan's angel was telling me it's all going to be okay. Mm. I got shivers as I hear that because my God, that song, that song is one of those, you know, maybe you go through your life and there are, you know, 10 to 50 key songs and she would be one of those for me. And, um, and so that's why for me, I feel so privileged to now be in a position where whether it's channeling uh, a video or a song, I can throw things out into the world. And for me, it's a, it's a gift. The, the most meaningful thing that I ever hear from anybody is when they go, oh my God, that really got me through something. And I'm like, oh, thank, th- great, thank you. I'm so glad to hear that that's, that's my why. And that makes me feel like, okay, good. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm doing what I can to contribute to that very same wheel of offerings, creativity, mm-hmm. healing that I wouldn't be here for. Uh, I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for how those things carried me through some very dark internal years. Mm, thank you for sharing. In the arms of <laughs> the angel. Yeah. Yes. Can you do it? Can I do it? Yeah. <laughs> Fly away from here, from this dark, cold hotel room, and the endlessness that you fear. We are pulled from the wreckage of your silent reverie. I think I've got the lyrics wrong. Yeah. Yeah. So good. Such a, and, and you know, I got to see her live in 2019. I'd never seen her and she was so important through my teens. And she was exactly as you would imagine her to be just stately, grounded, completely open, sweet, humble, and then out comes this voice. And you're like, oh my God, that voice, her way with melody, the, uh, just, yeah, she's, she's an earth angel for sure. And I'm sure she's very human too, you know, going through all the things that the rest of us go through. For sure. Well, your music does that for me on a lot of levels. And I'll share a story about that in a moment, but there's a quote that I think it comes from you. It's music is magic and songs are prayers. Mm -hmm. This truth runs deep for me. And uh, I think a lot of people are, are, I don't know, I I feel like there's going to be, I'm just letting you know now, and you probably know this, there's going to be a true spotlight on your music and the healing Mm -hmm. and the unity um, that I feel. And the reason why is because like, for example, this morning, the deer's cry Mm -hmm. is a really special one for me. And it really helped me in this past uh, couple of weeks in the dissolution of this partnership. You know, and in so many other songs that you sing, which brings me back to that connection, connection with self, connection with source, so that then we can be connected with anyone else, regardless of whether or not we're talking or are in alignment with how we perceive reality, especially in this time. I wanted to ask, though, as you were talking about this really initiatory time between six and 16, is there any particular teacher or lineage of teachings that really stands out to you outside of? Uh, you know, Sarah's music? I think in that time, I didn't, I would say creativity was my teacher and, mm. and, and the creative teachers I had were, were my light during that period of time. Um, around the age of 16, the Oprah Winfrey show became a huge teacher to me, huge. 
And this was before she had celebrities on. It was before she was doing Super Soul Sunday. I ate alive the episodes where she would just talk to the audience about how they felt and how they were getting through things. And as, as, as a person growing up in an emotionally, uh, an emotionally repressive, um, vibration, you could say, um, you know, feelings weren't really talked about when I was growing up in England by anybody, like it just wasn't around me. Um, but I was so hungry for that because I was feeling overwhelmed by the language of feeling in myself, in my body, um, and, and clearly was not wired the way everyone else was. Not that I saw that as a good thing. I saw that as a problem. So Oprah was like oxygen to me because it was like watching a live AA meeting. <laughs> Although, you know, we, it was like, oh, you know, it's, it's interesting. My, um, my partner is in recovery and. I went to lots of AA meetings with him at the beginning of our relationship so that I could understand that recovery journey. And of course, I come from that in my own self with eating and then bulimia. And But what I loved about AA meetings uh, when I would go with him was I said, God, if everyone did an AA meeting in the morning to start their day, this world would be a better place. Mm. Yeah, you don't need to talk about alcohol or drugs or whatever the addiction is. You just need to sit in a room where for five minutes people can just share what's going on for them. And you'd go around that room and one person is hilarious and has you all <laughs> howling and laughing. The next person shares how they're struggling and what they're going through and your empathy kicks in. Then the next person talks about something they're celebrating and you just get the whole spectrum and you're like, this is us. This, this is, is humanity, no matter what about the outside appearance, no matter the story we're telling ourselves about how this person feels today, when we hear it from them, we know, and we can't unknow it. Yeah. And there is a connection that happens in those rooms. So yeah, so for me, that was kind of like, she was the beginning, she was there at the beginning of my way out. The book that was a Bible for me was the four agreements. And ah, I bought that book as I soon as it, right it came here, out. Yep. <laughs> Nobody had heard of it. I remember buying like five copies for oh, wow. my closest friends and spiritual friends and giving it to them. And I get such a kick now if I go into a bookstore mm -hmm. and I see it like way up the chart. I'm like, this is fantastic. It took 24 years or 20 years, but yeah, this is a book that everybody should be reading because he channeled something beautiful with that book. He really did. And um, yeah, it's a blueprint for it's a blueprint for a compassionate and aware way of life. Yeah. You know, and as our mutual friend, Danielle Laporte would say, simplicity is sanity. Mm. And she started saying that to me via text a couple years back when everything seemed to be blowing up and so chaotic and still continues to be for, for those who can't see the grace and the divine alignment and everything unfolding. But his book, Simplicity is Sanity, you know, just really simple four statements. And when we embody that or do our best to remember to embody, because I always remember I'm so deeply human. I am human. We all are. <laughs> right? We all are. <laughs> Which brings me to the healing part of our purpose on this planet at this time specifically, or probably any time. You know, there's a lot of talk right now. It's very popular in the space of self-development, spiritual growth, the, the integrated shadow, right? The mm -hmm. alchemized shadow, the gift of the shadow. And yet there's also quite a few people that's like, mm, let's just focus on high vibration. Mm -hmm. And I believe they can both coexist, but I'm curious what you've either learned through disease or what you know for yourself. You travel the world, you talk to tons of people. What is your experience of the importance of that aspect of our healing from ancestral points of view, karmic points of view, our multidimensionality, um, our own current life? Yeah, great, great question. So the thing I've learned from the Z's about healing that feels completely true for me is they say, whatever you're healing for yourself personally, you're actually helping clean it up on the planet. Mm. So they say, we do not own any of our personal wounds. Oh, I love and that. And you might say, well, hang on a second. I was, you know, beaten up by my dad and I was the only child in my house. So my wound comes from my unique experience of being beaten up by my dad. The Z's would say, yes, you had 
a unique experience that isn't unique. There will be other kids in the exact same formation, perhaps in other cultures who went through the same thing, but the way you interpreted it and responded to it is not personal. Mm. It's coming from the energy on the planet. Now, somebody might go through something like that and come out like a real rebel and someone else might come out like that and be broken and be vulnerable and have no boundaries. So we are all going to respond to things in unique ways based on our wiring, our individual soul, our individual gifts, limitations. But when you're impacted into a wound in a scenario like someone beating you up and God, your parent, I mean, you can't think of anything that just shatters all of your belief or sense of safety in the world Mm -hmm. because you're trapped in that home. What you're actually on the receiving end of is that parent's energy field. And whatever the hell is going on in them, whatever has created this storm in them that they think it's okay, Mm. or what they need to do is to unleash violence on you. And and the same can be said of words. You know, words are so violent and they can rip sensitive people to shreds. Some people I know have often said to me, I'd rather they hit me in the face than said all those things to me. And I'm like, I don't know if I'm with you on that. (laughs) I'm like, I think I can take the words. I think I can take the words, but I don't know. You know, I haven't been hit in the face very much. Um, So, yeah, I think I think firstly, recognizing that as we personally heal, we create an imprint of healing. So let's say my story was, and it wasn't that I was beaten up by my family, but I'm Mm. no longer carrying, that's no longer impeding my life. I may still have memories. Mm -hmm. I may still have little PTSD moments that I'm working on, but they are not impeding my ability to connect with the world. They're not blocking me or stopping me. Mm -hmm. When I meet you, you're like, God, there's something about his energy. I really like being around and I don't know why. And it might be because you are still battling some of the stuff you went through with your family. Mm -hmm. And it's not even my outlook or my words that you're interested in. You're tuning in on the formula of healing that Mm -hmm. is now in my body. So that's why we're often attracted to each other. Mm -hmm. And the other piece the Z's say is, you know, we're all here walking into ancestral energies that have played out for thousands of years and learning to clean them, heal them. It's why I look at things like the recent Me Too movement, racial equality and justice, several movements we're seeing around the world that it is their time. Like it's time that we no longer move forward with some of these imprints. Then the other thing I'll just throw in, quicker answer, but it goes back to something you said. Personally, I understand why certain spiritual teachers, speakers, authors, I understand why sometimes you see a slightly annoyed or opinionated post from them. I understand why sometimes I saw one the other day from someone who's I, I, you know, I've seen this person's work and lovely, I really like their energy. And they were kind of in their post celebrating integrated healing. They were criticizing and attacking other methods that didn't include that. And while I understand what they're doing, they're trying to grab the attention of people who might be asleep to the fact that they really need to heal through the body. I don't think we have to attack or denigrate other people's methods or ways because there is no spiritual way. Yes. No spiritual way. Yes. We all have our own relationship to spirituality, to healing, to faith. Mm-hmm. And there isn't one way. You mm-hmm. can't have one way on the planet. You just can't. We're too diverse. So for me, I'm always a little more careful. And I don't know if I was always as careful when I was younger. I don't know. But I'm always a little careful to ever present anything as if it is the answer. Yeah. It might be an answer for you. Even in my energy updates, I say, you know, for those of you who resonate with any of these themes, you'll keep watching. Mm-hmm. If you're like, oh God, I don't like this guy, or oh, I don't like the way he talks, or I don't know what he's talking about, you won't keep watching because mm-hmm. we are we are appropriately self-oriented. Mm-hmm. We are we aren't gonna give time to someone just to be nice if it isn't giving us something. So, mm-hmm. you know, I think I think that's also an issue that it's I'd love I'd love to see us mature through some of that that you don't have to 
dob on someone else's method because when you dob on someone else's method what you're actually dobbing on is all the people who are following that method and we don't know why they might need to do it that way because we're not living in them so i'm with you i think both are true i'm a big fan of holistic healing i've never really followed one person one method i as a multi-dimensional soul i i take a little bit from everywhere and as each stage of life hits me differently i'm like oh i'm gonna try this mm-hmm. um, I'm not under the belief there is a way. I'm just, Mm. what's my way this month, you know? Totally. And that makes so much sense, especially for how much we are evolving, expanding. Um, Some of us being demanded into that right now, Mm. you know, which I go willingly at this point because there's no turning back, you know, and, uh, and I love this path. Um, Recently, I had someone on my show who is a ceremonialist and she's a shaman and and she was talking about this distinction between a lack of certainty, which so many are feeling, right? This upheaval in inside of like, you know, ooh, where's my safety? And and I loved how she referenced it. Erin Kinney, I want to give her a little honor right now around uh, lack of certainty is just a lack of clarity of energy because spirit is energy. Mm -hmm. So when you get clear on spirit moving through you as you, you make space for everyone to have their experience of it as well. And it's so deeply resonated. And it reminds me of what you just said is like a perfect little echo. Well, and I think, and I love that too. And I think part of that is we have been inappropriately trained to believe in certainty. Uh, we have been inappropriately trained <laughs> go to university or college get this job get married you'll be happy have kids you'll be a- no not you know maybe mm. but we weren't given much room for maybe in our society mm. growing up i think there's way more room for maybe today so i yeah. think the ultimate the ultimate spiritual truth is there is no certainty and yet many of us have got ourselves to where we are by relying on things that we have experienced as certain in our life that have allowed us to expand enough. But if you really think about it, the the certainty is birth and death. Yes. And everything else, you know, who knows (laughs) how it's going to go. So, uh, you know, I I, I love what Erin says. And I also think that one of the biggest shocks that we're having right now in the world is, oh my God, this system isn't Mm -hmm. as certain as I thought it was, or, oh, wow, this is way more corrupt than I realized it was. And what are we going to do about that? Mm -hmm. But actually the truth is that life isn't certain in any way that our minds can understand or direct. But if we can connect with the spirit of life and our soul and listen to ourselves, and every day know Mm -hmm. that we, okay, what's today? That for me is a much freer place to live from. And I, I'm not always in that place, but I, when I get out of that place, I know that's where I've got to get back to. Totally. I'm curious, what is a practice uh, of yours? Maybe not daily, because these days I'm like that whole 5 a.m. morning routine <laughs> to be a millionaire. That ain't my vibe. I like to sleep till 730. I'm okay with that. But is there a particular practice that you know that that can just really help you anchor into the truth of your soul? Well, it's weird. I, someone asked me this recently and I was thinking about it because I can't say, oh yeah, I meditate every morning for an hour. Or, that, that's not my truth. It's not my way. But I really thought about it. There are a few things that I do do that are really key for me that are, might seem quite mundane. I So we have a hot tub. You know, mm-hmm. it was one of the first things I bought when I had enough money to buy a hot tub because mm-hmm. I'm a water baby. So mm-hmm. I love being in water and I will literally be in the hot tub morning and night. And before that, I would be in the bath. So I have learned that if I'm immersed in water for at least 30 minutes a day, but up to two hours a day, mm-hmm. something is good in me. And I don't know what that's, it's very elemental, but it, it, you know, I, I, I need to be in water every day and that's a good for me. I work out every morning. I've been doing that since 2018, um, mm-hmm. five days a week, sometimes six. So I invested in my physical body in a different way than I ever had before. And that kind of helps me move energy. What's Um, your workout? I work out with a trainer and we do functional. So it's all functional fitness. It's all about physical strength, mobility Mm -hmm. Um, has changed me. And I remember when I first went to five days a week, it was, it was a big commitment and expense for me, but my mind told me this is going to be worth it 
uh, the yeah. time, the money, this, and, and, and it has revolutionized my life. And I'm grateful I'm able to do it because it's, I'm not the kind of person who's going to go to the gym myself and figure out all the exercises I need to do. So those two things. Um, but honestly, I'd be curious what my spiritual practices would have to be if I wasn't doing this work. Ah, yeah. Because I'm channeling, you know, <laughs> multiple times a week. And, you know, so I'm in and out of that energy. Um, but I have learned that, I, and again, this isn't so much a practice as a habit. Mm. I've started to learn over the last two, three years, I have to leave enough time for myself. Yes. There were periods in my life where I didn't. Mm. And there were periods in my life where I would be generating the energy for the work I did, for the team members I have, for, mm -hmm. you know, and, and in the last two years, it's come into sharp focus in a bigger way. Mm. I need my time. Because mm -hmm. when I take my time, magic happens for me, yeah. reflections happen, my own tuning in. And if I don't get that, I get out of balance. So, um, and then I can say things like, I put Deva Pramal on with Maten. If I feel like I need to reset, oh, great, I'll choose the right music, I'll choose the right atmosphere, I will change my pattern, I'll go for a walk. So, very, um, very simple habits, I guess, but things that I have come to really recognize oh this this is a big deal for me this makes a big difference to my life yeah and it's important to note that and to honor that and i'm so with you especially on the spaciousness of the calendar mm. uh yeah completely transformed that two years ago it's amazing that you naturally segued into where i wanted to go next as we begin to wrap in our last few minutes together david pramal and me 10 are mm. so profoundly special for me I wanted to share a quick story with you. I know you were just with them at a retreat in Costa Rica. Oh, um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> so over 20 years ago, um, I, for 18 years, was heavily involved with Reverend Michael Beckwith's Agape. Okay, yeah. Center of Truth. I was setting to be a minister and I ran multiple, um, uh, you know, different spheres of his, of the organization. And uh, they came and they performed a private concert. So about a thousand people in Culver City and um, the lights went dim and the men sang their part of so much magnificent than the women sang. And it went on for 20, 25 minutes and I'm getting the chills. Actually, I call them divine tingles as I'm remembering how it felt to be in that space. And it was the first time I understood what truly embodied divine masculine and divine feminine energy and frequency is it was the most profound portal. And so I just have to honor them because I know you love them. And I, I love them. Yeah. I know. So yeah, can you share a little bit about how you came into their field? And then I want to talk about your music as we as we begin to close. So we got connected, I think, through the sacred science of sound back in about 2019. And I invited them both onto my podcast, mm. um, which I was still running at the time. It's currently on on rest. Hiatus. But yeah, 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 yeah. I needed more space. I was like, yeah. okay, we can't keep this schedule up. Um, yeah. And basically, I interviewed them both and loved the two separate interviews and i can't remember how it happened but deva and i started being whatsapp friends oh. so like you know uh, audio messages back and forth um you know text messages um not f super regularly but you know just it was always lovely when we when we did and um it was so interesting uh, part of my knowing at the end of last year was i need to take more time for me uh, mm -hmm. I need to step out of the roles I have. And I don't just mean the creator of this work. I also mean the one sitting at the top of a team of 18 people and, you know, trying to figure out all the things that we figure out all the time and just every role. It was like, I'm going to go to Deva and Maten's retreat. Mm -hmm. I've not been a participant at a spiritual retreat for, God, I don't know, maybe a decade. I mean, I've done an art mm -hmm. workshop but maybe more than a decade and I've led so many. So mm -hmm. I laughed at my own mind because <laughs> my mind went, how fortunate that you can just afford to go and do that. Mm -hmm. you, you, you can take that time. You have the money to do it. How fortunate, number one. Mm -hmm. And number two, I literally had, is that okay uh -huh. in my head? Mm -hmm. and, and I was like, whoa, what's this? Am I allowed? Am I allowed to just 
go and do that for a week. And so I caught the part of my mind that I think we can all relate to. It's like, am I allowed to just go and do that for myself and leave every, you know, and of course I did still stay in touch with the team a little bit when I was away. And you were doing videos and posting them on social. And I, I remember did seeing two that videos. Like, I did two videos. Did. And I remember I did. thinking, oh, Lee, just be. <laughs> you know, and it's so funny because someone put a comment like that. And I, I don't normally look at comments, but for those I did. I was so in joy that I wanted yeah. to share it. And, and that was felt. very different. You know, on a weekly basis, I am producing in various forms for people. Mm -hmm. um, there are quieter weeks than others, but there's always something. I hadn't had to do that for days and days mm -hmm. and days. And I just felt this joy, but I also felt this spiritual moment. I was really excited about our remix album that we've got mm -hmm. coming out. And I suddenly connected the dots. Oh my God, I'm in the pool where Devor and I would talk about the music mm -hmm. and the remix album is just coming out today. So I, it, it, what was lovely for me was it was a true genuine, oh God, I want to leave this video and tell people about soul magic. Um, but I did see someone <laughs> made us, they were slightly judgy in their comment too. And I was like, it's okay, you know, yeah. good for you, you, you want to tell me what to do. I chose different. <laughs> um, because I was in my happy place and it just felt lovely to do a video from that freedom. And trust me, I didn't upload it. I just sent it to the team and th I was done. Like I, I didn't even, you know, know when it was going out at that point because I don't post things myself. Um, I just occasionally give personal things for them to post. So, yeah, it was profound and singing every day. Exactly what you said. Being in that group, there were 55 of us oh. singing every morning, singing at night. Oh. Um, it was fantastic and it's a retreat center I have led retreats at multiple times so I was literally in the in the place going oh wow I've never really had time to look at the ceiling wow. <laughs> I literally was like I see why everybody loved soul magic retreats this is amazing this is, great. <laughs> this is it was it was so cool it was so good and I I already want to go again so um, oh my gosh well I am okay so I didn't it wasn't even on my radar you know when you're ready everything appears yeah. and shows up in the field and and uh, when I saw that, next thing I know, I'm like stalking. I'm not a stalker by any means. I just, when I get a hit, it's a full body resonance. And I knew that I would have to be at one of their retreats because I reflected on 20 years ago and the last time that I felt so held in that sacred womb that they that they co-created and that we all really weave together in that sacred, uh, really special private uh, concert that they that they offered. So thank you for sharing that medicine with us. It felt like radiance was pouring out of you. Uh, and it was. And so, yeah, on the one hand, I was like, well, you don't work. But I also knew it was coming from your joy. It was coming from your heart amplified. Yeah, it was. And the thing you learn about social media is everyone's <laughs> going to have an opinion and you just oh, have to, know. If, you know, if you're going to get knotted up in people's opinions, don't do social media and don't don't look. But, you know, I, I will also say that, you know, one of the things that was key for me was mm -hmm. when I booked that retreat, I had no idea what the prior three months would have been like. When I got to that retreat with a lot of big changes in my life, mm -hmm. I needed it. Like it wasn't, it was no longer just this, oh, what a lovely gift to give myself. It was perfectly timed. Like I needed it when I needed it. So it was such a gift. I hear that. Actually, I felt that for you. I'm so grateful that you got that. So as we begin to wrap, I want to talk about your music. Um, I know you've been putting out music for quite a while. If I have my dates correct, uh, 2009, Golden World Music, your label that was once just yours, and now you feature different artists, which I don't think enough people talk about, uh, but that's me um, and why we're doing it here. But your latest song, the remix, well, there's an album, Metamorphosis. Yeah. Yes, Metamorphosis. And, yes. Yes. And then you, we were born 2.0 which opened up this portal for me to discover all of your music. Oh, There's good. certain tracks where I'll just burst into tears or I'll dance or different vibrations and energetic transmissions come through. And on each album, it's so dynamic. And so I'm curious, you know, where you are with your music and the label and what more we can anticipate from you as you possibly double down on that particular medicine. Mm. 
It's funny, you know, I'm at home today, but I, we have a studio in Agora Hills where I have a, a, a great vocal booth where I do all the vocals or the channels or whatever. So I woke up at 6.30 this morning and I was at the booth by 7.15 uh, yeah. and I was there for about an hour and 15 minutes because there's a song that we're working on and I did a, a session on it yesterday for about 90 minutes and Devore left me a message this morning going, it's good, but can we have a bit more bite? To it. And I was like, oh, I see why he's saying that. So DeVore and I work completely collaboratively. So DeVore Bozik, who is an amazing Slovenian composer, he's, you know, he's my bestie as well. Yeah. So um, we're just delighted that we're getting to do all this music because when we first met, I had released one album in 2001 called Shape Shifting, which we remastered and re-released in 2009 when I started uh -huh. the label. Okay. And I just released an album called Golden World, a cover yeah. of Sarah McLachlan's Angel and a few things. And that's when Devore and I met and we said, we'd love to do music together. And we, we did an album that we both think was half successful. It was called Arise. We were trying to fuse spiritual lyrics with pop music and, you know, it was a, it was a tough project uh, because of the way we had to finish it. But long story short, through the coming, the following years of from 2014 to 2020, we did loads of music in workshop rooms. We would write songs in response to what participants were going through. Mm -hmm. They'd all go to break at five o'clock and they were coming back to us at 7.30 or whatever. And we would write a song and rehearse it in that period of time, Whoa. go to dinner quickly, come back. Uh, there'd be a channeled message for an hour. And then that song, which we had just written, we would do live at the end. Mm -hmm. So it was very on the fly, very organic, but very responsive. Mm -hmm. So when the lockdowns hit, we'd already said, let's record a few more things a bit more professionally. Um, and then of course, with lockdowns, we had to cancel so many live events. So we went into overdrive with, well, we have all these, this music we've created over the years that very few people have heard. Yeah. And DeVore is an incredible um, arranger and engineer. And we both recognize that we've grown a lot together over the last 10 years with, with what we do. So um, mm -hmm. yeah, our, 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 our dream was could we put music out into the world that was helping people? And what I had to overcome was when people want you for one thing. Yes. And you, yeah. and I had that voice in my head, well, I don't really want me, you know, and, and truth be told, we didn't have a very big audience for the music years ago, but you know, I recognized we were in a very fortunate position. We had been put together. Mm -hmm. I used profit from my healing work to fund the music because as we all know, music is so devalued now you can spend, you know, tens of thousands on an album and videos and all that stuff. And it's so hard to ever recoup it. So the way we were able to do it was, okay, great. This can be our passion project and we will put music out into the world. And so that's what we're doing. And there's, there's lots more music uh, coming and um, yeah, we just love doing it. So thank you for oh. all you said. Oh yeah, for sure. I want to wrap as, oh, I know we've gone just a smidge over. Um, okay. Oh, thank you for that. You know, I heard you on my friend Ashley Goner's podcast, Uncover oh, Your Magic. she's lovely. Yeah, yeah, she's yeah. I only just met her. Yeah. Oh, I know. That's how I got connected with you. You were at the top, top, top of my dream list huh. um, for about a year. And then I saw that and I was like, huh? And she's like, oh, I'll connect you. So Kim was amazing. And that's how that happened. I love, I love, love, love that. But she'd asked you a question that I hadn't heard anyone else ask you. And, it, and I, and I want to ask you here so we can share it with my listeners. And it was, if you weren't doing the work of the channeling, what else would you be doing? Now, you gave her an answer there. And I'm curious if it's still the same. Um, yeah, because you'd mentioned something specific and it lit me up. And I was like, I don't know if we're going to collaborate and I can help bring that to life. It, do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> there's, one of, there's one of two answers I would have yeah. given. So the one answer, my fantasy career is to be like Ludovico Einaudi, like a modern classical pianist or Nils Fram or Oliver Arnold. Oh. I am way too, I, I, I've, oh. I have a piano over there. I have never sat down and done piano lessons. So we know that's <laughs> not going to happen. But I, I love people who can sit at a piano. I hear music and I use my voice to bring down the melodies I hear and then Devore and I work them. But so modern classical pianist is kind of like my fancy job. Mm. But I also know if I was a modern classical pianist, there'd be something else I'd be lusting after. So I'm good with where I am. Of course. <laughs> but the, the, my, my next big project is a network. Yes. Yes. <laughs> 
it's a vision I've had for um, almost a decade. In fact, in some ways over a decade. And it, it got strong around 2015, but I've always known the timing had to be right. I want to create a, um, well, I'm going to create, yes, and we're yes, having yes. meetings about this now, um, how we can create an umbrella for people. And there are a few things about that umbrella that are really important to me. I want it to be able to give to people who have no money mm. to invest. I want it to be a place where they can come learn, enhance their lives, get taught on various areas that can enhance their life, not just metaphysics, anything yeah. that's going to help you live a good life, mm -hmm. help you help the planet. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, we just have to figure out the how does that pay for itself? You know, how do we, we will, that's what that's the job. Um, but yeah, I, I, I've had um, green lights around it for two years, but I'm, I'm just really taking my time because it's, it's the kind of massive mm -hmm. undertaking you don't want to rush at. And, um, but I'm excited about it and it's, it's coming. Ooh, I just, I got the full body divine tingles when I heard you say that on her show. And I was like, Ashley, you guys ended with the big <laughs> boom, like what a network. And I just knew I had this knowing that it was going to be so divine. And then I just somehow, got, I mean, maybe it's a fantasy like you in the classical piano, but I got this hit that somehow we would, we would somehow align synergies hmm. and uh, maybe there is something there to explore. I just, it, it, it was just like, cause that's the hit when I got love and power in May energy update from the Z's, that was what came through for me. And it looked like it could be Gaia or shift. And, and it's like, mm, this or better, right? Like it was, yeah. you know, it was just, it was just say really open. And then for me, one of my totems is take all the time uh, you need. Yes. Right. Never rushing anything when it's creative and it's source driven and just allowing for it to unfold. Yeah. Uh, which is exactly what we've done here today. And I am so, so grateful we finally connected. You are a beautiful gift. And I'm so grateful that you are here on this planet doing the work, saying yes over and over and over the courage, the bravery, the gumption. It's incredible to witness you and to learn from you and to be inspired by you and to finally connect with you. Even though we did vibrationally, it's just so beautiful to have met somehow virtually. So I'm grateful for you, Mr. Lee. Thank you so much, Michelle. <laughs> it's, it's lovely to meet you. And, and, you know, I obviously I've over the years, I've, I've done lots of different interviews with different people and you have a you have a beautiful articulation of thoughts and concepts and um and yeah it's it's you just have a you have a beautiful open vibration i have no doubt that whatever door just closed for you on a business level is just opening an even bigger more beautiful more you future mm. which is you know all that any of us can do and it's so interesting to me to hear you thank me or say that i was on your dream list that's kind Ooh, of top of <laughs> okay but that's kind of hilarious to me because for anyone out there you know i remember saying yes to doing readings as a job and thinking will anyone come yeah so it's very interesting <laughs> when you get to a place where the what you're doing your mission how you're serving mm -hmm. is is positively impacting people and you you hear that kind of thing it's kind of funny because you're like, wow, if, how would I have thought about this 20 years ago? So I share that just to anyone else who, you know, is, is and I'm sure you have a lot of people uh, tuning in for you who, like us, want to contribute to this field, want to be part of this field. So keep going, people, keep going. It, it's just, it's the, it's the tortoise. It's the, uh, keep, keep taking each step at a time. And one day you turn around and look behind you and go, oh, wow, I had no idea that I'd left this trail behind me. So, so true. Beautiful wisdom to end on. Thank you so much, Lee. Thank you.